I'm Jane Marshall and I'm one of the grant holders on the project that developed Jest. Aphasia is a language problem that's caused by damage to the brain. Um, most people have aphasia as a result of stroke. And aphasia causes damage to all aspects of language. So people who have aphasia find it difficult to talk, they find it difficult to read, to write, and also may find it difficult to understand language. Unfortunately, aphasia is common. There are about 250,000 people living with aphasia in the UK at the moment. And it can have devastating consequences for the person's life. It will affect people's relationships, their work, their leisure activities. Just about everything they do will be affected by aphasia. Three years. Mm -hmm. Dear, oh dear. Okay. All right. Three so, years. So it's a long time ago that you've yeah. been long time that you've been living with your aphasia. Yeah. Yeah. And it's obviously difficult for you to talk. It is. Mm. But more e easier for you to write, in fact. Uh, yes, it is. I can. The, 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 I can do that. That. Um, mm -hmm. da, 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 I've just. Yeah. So you're showing me that you can read. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Aphasia doesn't affect so, a person's intelligence. Uh, well. So the person will still be able to solve problems, will still be able to think, to remember, and they will be able to use that intelligence to help themselves get around the communication problems. So people with aphasia use all kinds of strategies to help themselves get their message across. They may point to things, they may take their conversational partner to something they want to talk about, they may use pictures, they may use maps, they will use all kinds of strategies to convey what they want to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were showing me your, your right arm. Yes. I, I think you were showing me that that's a bit weak. That's right. Mm. So hard for you to gesture yeah, with, that, with that arm. Yes. And it looks like it's a bit easier with this arm. That's right. Yeah. Because your stroke affected that that's side of right. your this, right hand this, side. That's right, this, that, and there. And that's common, isn't it, for people who've got a face? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Gesture can be one of the key strategies in aphasia. Gesturing is something that we all use. We all gesture while we talk, and all of us can gesture if we can't be heard, for example, in a noisy restaurant if we want the bill. And people with aphasia might make even more use of gesture to stand in for the conventional language that they're no longer able to employ. Some people with aphasia use gesture automatically, so they will turn to this modality and they'll do so very effectively. Other people might find it more difficult to gesture. There may, for example, be movement problems that have, ris have arisen because of the stroke, so they find it hard to make the hand shapes that they need for gestures. In some cases as well, the person may have problems thinking symbolically, so it might be difficult to imagine a gesture that they could employ that would stand in for the word that they want to use. Speech and language therapy can make a huge difference for people with aphasia. It can help them to speak more effectively, it can help them to compose more grammatical language, it can help them with reading and writing. It can also help them to use strategies more effectively to get around their problems. Intensive practice in speech and language therapy is very important. We know that the more you do, the more likely you are to make improvements. So while working with the speech and language therapist is very important, it's also very helpful if the aphasic person is practicing independently as well. And this is where computers can help. So the person can be using their computer to practice therapy tasks, maybe very intensively, on their own. And they can also be doing so quite independently, so it gives them some autonomy in their rehabilitation. I'm Stephanie Wilson and I'm a human-computer interaction researcher on the project. JEST has benefited from its development by a strongly multidisciplinary team. We're a mixture of speech and language researchers, human-computer interaction researchers, and people with aphasia, such as Gerald, Philip and Mick, who worked as consultants on the project. This multidisciplinary team started out by exploring engaging and accessible interaction design for people with aphasia through a series of participatory design workshops. We can do that. Mm -hmm. We called it there. Yeah. But that, that was good. We didn't do that. Ugh. No. That. Something a bit more clear. That right. 
We learned about the importance of clear and direct mappings between user actions and their effects in the digital world. So we discarded the traditional keyboard in favour of a specialised keypad that has just got four buttons on it. And each of these buttons initiates a single action in jest. Now it's your turn. We learned that it's very important to keep distractions to a minimum, so the jest screens are clean and uncluttered. People with aphasia benefit from clear and consistent prompts. So Jest contains prompts that reveal the current state of the system and tell the user what action to take next. Here is the gesture for camera. Now it's your turn. The consistency is incredibly important. So Jest has consistent screen layouts, input actions, prompts, behaviours and navigation. Perhaps the most important lesson we learned was the value of a motivating and engaging user experience. This led us to include a unique 3D world in which Jerry, an animated character, navigates an environment such as a house and a park. Now it's your turn. Other motivational features include positive feedback in the form of applause and reward points and subtle changes in Jerry's world in response to successful gesture production. Camera. Six weeks, oh no, I don't know. I don't know. Camera. Camera? In level three, the users will see little video clips of people employing gesture in everyday environments. And we involved our consultants with aphasia in making the clips. So the users will see people who obviously do have aphasia and people who don't have aphasia using gesture to communicate with one another. And by doing this, we're hoping to exemplify how gesture is used in everyday communication and to provide a very positive model of gesture. And we're hoping in doing this to encourage the users to generalise their gesturing skills into their everyday communication. Until Mick had the stroke, I had never heard of aphasia. I just think the person was dumb or something like that. I never realised that a stroke could cause lack of speech. The paralysation, that bit, yeah, but I never realised that it could affect your speech. <laughs> Gesturing when you can't speak is quite an important part of communicating and it has helped me. The ones he learned, he will he will use them, and most of them were useful to him. So it was, it was really, whoever thought it up, it was well thought out. Mick really enjoyed doing it, and it was one of the first things he did. Came down in his dressing gown and wanted to do it. So he did enjoy it, didn't you? was first said about a computer, I thought it was going to be really complicated and Mick would get frustrated with it. I thought, I'm never going to be able to help him with it. But he didn't need any help, did you? No. But overall, he really enjoyed doing it and it was so simple that it was something that he could do. So that was good. So Mick, you've just finished oh. using the computer. Oh. When you use Jest, how does it make you feel? Oh. I think you're telling me that you want to keep hold of it. Brilliant. One, two, three, four. Four, five? 
Yes. Five? Yes. Okay. Five. Um, so you were one of five people right. with aphasia. Right. And that, that's Sunday. good. That was a, that was good. Oh yes, fine. <laughs> yeah. What number would you give that? On here. Um, one. One? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Enough people aware of what aphasia actually is. Um, and like a lot of other things, they will tend to ignore Mick like he doesn't have an opinion or anything. I mean, Mick is still himself, he just can't speak. And if people take time and are patient and speak clearly and slowly, you can usually get there. Yeah.